Hi everyone, my name is Trevor and I'm a PhD student at Harvard Medical School. I work on interactive data visualization tools for both microscopy and genomics. And today I'm going to be talking about adapting existing Python APIs for reading multi-scale imaging data as ZAR and using that within DASC. We can think of an image as simply a multi-dimensional array. And as a refresher, an array is simply a container of items where each item is of the same data type and size in bits. The number of dimensions and items in that container are also described by the array shape. ZAR is an open source specification for storing chunked, compressed, multi-dimensional arrays. When data sets are too large to fit into memory, we can use something like ZAR to help us deal with these large data sets. ZAR divides larger arrays into smaller, evenly spaced chunks. Each chunk is compressed and then only the particular chunks that correspond with the selection desired are read back into memory. ZAR is based off the HDF5 data model where multiple arrays are organized within a hierarchy. Metadata is encoded in JSON and chunk data are simply compressed blobs. The array metadata denoted Z array describe exactly how each of those blobs are encoded. What's unique about ZAR compared to something like HDF5 is that each blob of data is given a unique key and referenced by that key. And therefore, any key value store can be used to encode a ZAR data set. For a given array, its shape, chunk shape, and compression strategy is all that is needed to be able to access that chunk from a given store. And a store is simply a Python mutable mapping that when given a unique key, returns the desired chunk. Going back to the example from before, with these two labeled arrays, foo and bar, I can access chunk data simply by using a unique key from the store. And I can access array metadata for the bar array using a different key. We can create a store in memory just with a Python dictionary and then fill that dictionary with key value pairs that describe the metadata for our ZAR hierarchy. We'll use these methods from the ZAR um, library to initialize both root metadata as a group and then add an array within our store called foo. You can see that our dictionary has been now been updated with these new key value pairs, which then we can access by calling the store get item method. Here I'm printing out the array metadata that has been written to our store for the foo array. We can now pass the store object directly to ZAR and then provide the given path to our array and ZAR and DASP will both recognize the array that we've written in our store. Now, you probably won't want to use a Python dictionary as your custom store, but this demonstrates the flexibility of ZAR's data model and how we can sort of hack the store object to adapt existing Python libraries to read um, data as ZAR. You might be thinking, well, my data isn't ZAR. And today I hope to show that we can actually use ZAR to unify um, existing Python APIs for reading multi-scale imaging data and thus provide a consistent API for interacting with these data with DASC. Multi-scale image formats share a lot of similar concepts and ultimately we can translate those different concepts into the ZAR data model. The idea is to perform this translation to ZAR within a custom store and the store object allows us to wrap an existing Python API um, and then expose an interface that both Dask and ZAR understand. So the open slide store depicted here wraps an open slide Python object, which can read a handful of both proprietary and open image formats. Um, the DZI store adapts a deep zoom image format into a multi-scale ZAR that also Dask can understand. And finally, TIFF file exposes a ZAR TIFF store object, um, which exposes a multi-scale ZAR for any format that TIFF file can read as well. And by um, creating this consistent interface for uh, representing multi-scale images, we can then interact with any one of these stores interchangeably. To demonstrate this concept of interoperability, I've written a function here that takes a generic ZAR store, which is just the mutable mapping, and we'll read the multi-scale metadata. From that metadata, it will open each level in that store as a separate ZAR array. And so this returns a list of Dask arrays. I can use the open slide store to open an image that is compatible with the open slide library and load each resolution as a separate Dask array. 
can inspect the highest resolution by printing out the first element in that list. And I can also draw a particular region at a different resolution by using NumPy indexing. Similarly, I can take the deep zoom image store um, and for a remote deep zoom image, I can load the image pyramid. Again, I can inspect the highest resolution. This one is much larger, uh, 125 gigabytes in memory. And again, I can draw a particular region from a very uh, a different level of that image pyramid. And finally, I can use the TIFF file library and its built-in imread function with as czar to read another um, multi-channel imaging data set as a multi-scale desk array. Here I'm reading that image. I can print off the highest resolution and I can draw um, one of the channels from that image at a lower resolution. We can pass any of these lists of dask arrays directly to Napari, which can lazily load the image pyramid as we interact with the scene. Both the DZI store and the OpenSlide store implement Napari plugins. So given a URL or path, we can swap out which store is required and then lazily load the image pyramid. Here I have an image installed locally which is a whole slide image, and I'll open it with the Napari Lazy Open Slide plugin. This has created the Open Slide store, which ultimately powers this interactive view um, with the Dask arrays on top. Similarly, I can open the remote um, deep zoom image with the Napari DZI czar plugin. And similarly, Napari will load this image just the same since it's just a list of Dask arrays. So the steps to create these particular store objects are to create missing czar array metadata for each resolution in your particular format, create the multi-scale metadata that describes where each of these arrays exist in the store. And then ultimately we wanted to write a function that takes a czar path and returns a complete chunk from that store um, as described by the particular metadata. Since ZAR is an open specification, there are implementations in other languages that also understand the store object. It's just, they don't have that, uh, that sort of glue code to do the translation. However, we can do interesting things like um, take our existing store that does that sort of glue code and then expose the, the, that store over an HTTP endpoint. So here, I've created a TIFF file TIFF store for a QP TIFF on my local machine. And I'm going to serve this store at an HTTP endpoint uh, on my local host 8000. And all that this endpoint is doing is forwarding requests um, for a given endpoint down to the underlying store and then returning a response. And so I'm able to interact with this on, in the browser with the JavaScript client that understands multi-scales are, and you can see the requests here on the left coming in. I'm able to zoom and pan. I'm using a viewer called Vizar to do this. And then similarly, uh, in the Python ecosystem, I can connect to this remote data set um, in a separate process on my machine and view uh, the uh, data set in Napari as well. So here I have that multi-scale data set, except rather than it using the store directly, it's accessing an HTTP endpoint. So there's a lot of exciting, cool things you can do um, once you've done sort of this translation to czar. Thank you so much for listening to my talk. And if you have any questions about uh, czar or custom storage, please leave, uh, reach out. And especially if you write a custom store, let me know.